outcome, right? The most beautiful churches in the world took three, four, five hundred years, thousand years to build. They were cross-generational projects. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not saying that we can save men right now. That would be absurd. What I am saying, though, is that men can save themselves by working towards that goal. Yeah. Religion's always been a very good way to um, increase productivity. Obviously, keep your head on straight. Avoid a bunch of stupid shit. You know, for, you know, luckily, if you got discipline, you can avoid it. You know, avoid, you know, being an alcoholic or doing drugs and doing all those stupid shit. But, um, but yeah, I mean, religion absolutely helps a lot of people when it comes to that. It's just that I look at it like, damn. Are people are, are people gonna re? Because I think it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Personally, I You're think right. it's gonna continue to get even. Yep. I think women are gonna continue to be even. I think it's gonna be the, like right now. It's cool to be a sex worker as a chick. Like you got young people nowadays, right? Yeah, yeah boys and girls saying I want to be an influencer, right? For the girls, I want to be an influencer that's sexualizing myself. For the guys, they want to be a moronic idiot that's you on know? Twitch running around doing stupid shit. So it's like. It's um, the youth is like just brainwashed. And then you got you compound that with the music, with TikTok, with um, you know, with the, the, the pornography, the ubiquitousness of uh, ubiquity of pornography. everywhere. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. So it's like I look at it like fuck. Like okay, how's the guy gonna navigate this nowadays? Like religion ain't gonna save you from these hoes right now. Maybe in like you said, mm -hmm. in, two, uh, in two to three generations. But you know, yeah, you know what saves men though? A mission. Absolutely, I agree. What I agree. saves men is a mission. Yeah. And if you give men a direction and they know that they're collectively working towards that that mission, man, it's incredible how much men can achieve even with a small collective and a mission and an ideology. I agree. I and agree. that's why I'm like, push that. I, well, for me, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm going to push that. I'm going to push that direction. And it's been so successful in days past. And we've just forgotten we have our own institution, too the church we have our own institutional power and we can push back but we have to get in their face we have to stop pretending that christianity is a be nice yeah i was gonna hands. say so what is your strategy because like you got gay pastors now you got female pastors you get in their face you got you all go this confront stuff them. like you you ask you ask these guys just like what happened with tp usa when they asked them the question of all questions you know how is it that you know your lgbtq push in conservatism is helping us win the culture war and they had no answer to it right by the way stroke of political genius that that happened mm -hmm. okay they got in their face they said no this is not part of christian ethics this is not part of our grounding foundation what are we trying to conserve here and that that type of thing i think has more of a value to general society than any other single thing men could be doing. Yeah, I mean, uh, hold on, I've go got ahead. a question for you, bro. Because sure. uh, I've been listening this whole time. Yeah. I, be I believe you're on the right track here, 100. Um, percent But I also come from a Christian background. Yeah, I believe what you're saying is true, 100. percent Only the issue here is that, like, the church itself is not at all fault. You know, I think the church itself is wayward. It's gone all the way left. Now, granted. How do you fix the issue at hand? It starts with the church. But the Pope himself, other pastors that are funded by the government themselves, are all to the left. How do you fix that? I'll explain. You are correct, especially in Catholicism, this is true. But you know what's interesting about the Catholic Church, and I'm an Orthodox myself, not Catholic. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is you have, for the first time in an organization that I've seen, mm -hmm. which is involved in politics, you have top-down instead of bottom-up corruption. Usually it's corruption from the bottom, which goes up to the top, and then the top stays corrupt, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, a lot of Catholics are based, man. I mean, they're pretty awesome. They're the grounding foundation of Catholicism. They're the money givers. They're the tithers. Yeah. They're the people who are uh, making the Catholic Church possible to begin with. And it's like, it's really easy to go to those people and say, stop tithing. Stop tithing if they're going to go towards this, you know, this this type of agenda. Stop feeding the money to them. That's how you get at Catholicism because the bottom's not corrupt. The top is corrupt. You can go for the clergy, and the clergy can vote with their wallet. And, man, if you starve an institution of money, what happens, right? That's what they do to creators, right? They don't like what you say. They starve you of money, and that shuts you up. And it's the same thing with any organization. It's the same thing within orthodoxy. It's the same thing within Protestantism. Cut off the money supply until they reform to what they're supposed to be. Mm. And it's like um, the Catholic Church, much harder because the corruption does go up to the top, in my opinion. 
okay? But still, the grounding foundation of most Catholics, they're pretty awesome. Most of them are pretty awesome people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, I don't think it would take too much to begin to push them to say, stop tithing that way until, you know, some of this stuff goes by the wayside. Who are they going to follow? You or the Pope? Well, they're going to follow the Pope for the most part, but some of them are so frustrated with mm -hmm. what's going on with papal authority mm -hmm. um, or papal authority that I don't think it would take much, right? I'm not saying that one man's going to be able to push the whole tide. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that you can begin at least to do your own part to move people towards that. I'm not saying one guy's going to be able to do it. That's absurd. Though Those single people have been able to do things like this in the past. I think that yeah, everybody moving towards, just towards it in their own way, trying their hardest in their own way to move towards that. Yeah. Uh, that's how you see, see things get done. I like that. I would just say, though, uh, tell me if you understand this phrase, right will be wrong, wrong will be right in these times. Right will be wrong and wrong will be right. Yeah. So, but that's all times. But even more so now. Well, more so than when. So if you look, if you look at history... That I mean, that if we're if we're gonna get into theology, mm -hmm. right? Everything that is to, to come to pass has already come to pass. Yes. Right. Could be way worse in a hundred years, and it may have been way worse two hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Ultimately, I'm not gonna look at it though and say, "Hey, we're in the end times right this second, so I'm just gonna throw in the towel and throw my hat on the couch and I'm done." No, I'm 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 going to still act within the ethical purview of which I've been given. And I'm going to, if Jesus comes tomorrow, right, and it was all for nothing, uh, then it was all for something. So that's the way, that's the way I see it. I like it. Good man. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, uh, I mean, you did say it's a multi-generational thing. Which yeah, cross-generational. Yeah, it's going to, yeah. yeah, it's going to, it's going to take a while. Um, it's just, I think like with, with the way things are now, us being in a secular society, et cetera. And I know you disagree with me on the 50 body count, which is totally fine. I, I think that's important for you to be able to have a conversation with people that you disagree with. Sure. Um, I think it's I think it's a viable strategy given the environment that we're in now with the way women are, with the way the marriage uh, institute is set up in the United States, with the state being involved, et cetera. And let's be honest, most guys are not going to get married through a religious, um, a religious counterpart that's going to protect them and not incentivize the woman because most women nowadays are like if i'm gonna get married i need a marriage certificate i need i need all this stuff i mean hell you can't even tell a girl nowadays that you want a prenup without issues right so it's like i, I think with, with knowing that most guys are gonna get married through the state it's like all right you're gonna go through this route then you need to be prepared because i think it's the most important boxing match of your life you need to train because that girl's definitely been training when she was going through college and being at the 304 and smashing dudes and all this other stuff so it's like which goes back um I was going to ask you about this, actually. I wrote this down. Sure. You, you have a very strong discon... Uh, you, you don't like egalitarianism. No. Right? And feminism, et yeah. cetera. Which I agree with you. I think there's brings a lot of inherent problems, which is why we're even having this conversation right now with how, how should men move nowadays, right? Yeah. And, you know, I think, obviously, feminism is what's caused a lot of this. Um, what's your... I, I guess... I'll just let you... I'll just turn it to you and you tell us what your issues are with it. It's a, and you just go off. Sure. So feminism starts with a flawed assumption that egalitarianism is even possible <laughs> and that equity is even possible. It is not. Uh, it's actually illogical. Egalitarianism is illogical. Men and women have a very different ontology. The basis of what they are is different. Mm -hmm. But they also have another glaring problem, which is force. Men are always going to have a monopoly on force. Therefore, women's rights can only come from men. That's the only way it's actually possible is through the enforcement arm. So when women say we want an egalitarian voluntary society, they're actually relying on force of men in order to uh, take care of those laws inside of that society for their egalitarianism. It's instantly unequal. That's why you can be drafted. Yeah. And they can't. Exactly. Because yeah. the monopoly on force to protect their pampered asses is done by men such as yourself and others yeah. who have the monopoly on force. So egalitarianism from the ground up is a flawed concept immediately. Feminism, mm -hmm. right, has been taking the last 200 years to subvert this concept and say instead, no, 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 we're interchangeable widgets. Women can do <laughs> everything that men can do, except basically everything men can do. Their yeah. bone structure, their body, everything is completely different. Just having women, most women, just working outside right? Their actual physiology can't take it. 
They have trouble with heat regulation. They have trouble with all sorts of things. They actually can't do a lot of those jobs. Not all women. There's plenty of outliers who can, but not enough. Yeah. Whereas most men. And I think that's the key right there. That's not right. enough. Not enough. Not enough can do it where we can sustain society. But most men can. Yeah. That's the thing that's funny is it's not outliers with men. It's most. And I'm talking most men, even big, fat, obese dudes. Yeah. Right. I see them working on road crews and they're hauling shit. Right. Yep. They are paving roads. They're still doing it. Yeah. OK. I am. Not, you know, that the Helgas of the world. Right. <laughs> they're working in in office spaces for a reason they actually can't do it yeah so all of the modernity that they enjoy is basically basically created by men Mm -hmm. and uh, that's the only reason that they even have a leg to stand on for any egalitarian claims to begin with is because we've built the society from which they make the claims we built the microphones they're speaking into from which (laughs) to make those claims and then on top of that protect their pampered asses at night while they're at home sleeping and they go but i'm just as 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 good as admit it's ridiculous (laughs) egalitarianism is actually logically and any feminist any feminist hearing this who ever wants to debate on egalitarianism I, I welcome it. Don't care how high profile you are. I'll go right into your studio, wherever you are, and completely <laughs> eviscerate you on it. There is no such thing. It's a complete and total lie. There's a book you should read. My ri- wife wrote it. It's called Occult Feminism. Mm. Um, I brought oh, a copy, shit. actually, brought for both of you. I'll, I'll, I'll bring them to you next show. But cool. uh, phenomenal. Traces all the roots of feminism yeah. uh, right to its core. And, yeah, it's, it's all based on these flawed presuppositions that men and women are interchangeable widgets and 90 percent of the problems you see in society can be traced back to this idea you know it's interesting um so I agree 100 yeah, percent with all of that I've, that. Said, I've said a bunch of that, that a bunch of times when <laughs> yeah. i'm talking to women uh and and you know people get angry at me I've, I've i've taken a stance i've said i genuinely think a woman's vote should be 50 percent of a man's and Aside. whoa holy crap what are you talking about and i'm like well oh, it's because you. of all the things you just listed yeah men are the ones that are typically predominantly in the military, in the police force, etc. Like we're the enforcers at the end of the day to give you and protect the rights that you talk about. So it's like, you know. And then the other thing too is that a lot of them aren't in like infrastructure jobs that keep the country going. Um, I I think you should only vote if you have skin in the game. And the, the military draft, they don't have to. That's go how it the used to be. Draft. It used to be you had to have skin in the game. Now yeah. that you know, there's a, there's hundreds of ways to do this besides property ownership. Yeah, you can do single household voting. Yeah. Only married couples can vote. Mm. And so now you and your wife's vote, it's for the whole household, right? No, That's still... a really good way to curb that. Yeah. There's another way to curb that, too. You can do selective service voting. You give six years of your life to the state unpaid, mm-hmm. and now you have the right to vote. Yeah. Right? Yep, yep, That's yep. skin in the game. Yep. You don't have to make it based around, you don't even have to I've take women before, out because what they will have happen? To, yeah, they got to have skin in the game. Government employee, your military mm-hmm. service, et cetera. I'm like, okay, then you can get a full vote. Sure. But if like, you're just a chick on fucking OnlyFans, right? Dude, right. No way. Or you're like one of these chicks or that's you're 18. Like, yeah. Well, Why is an eight? So how about how about this for the age gap argument, mm-hmm. right? Ah, oh, the 40, 40 year olds taking advantage of this poor nineteen year old girl. Then why can she negate his forty year old vote if he is that superior to her that Damn. he can just instantly manipulate her? Mm-hmm. Tell me why it is that she can nullify his vote. <laughs> that's a good. Damn, that's what she. Really that makes. Up. No sense and is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard in my life, right? So um, you can mitigate it via household voting. Also, the the trick is if you were to do like six years selective service where you weren't paid for it, but then you could vote, right? You'd have high status in your community. I very much doubt that most women would do that. Hell no. Very much doubt no, it. No, they wouldn't. And so, yeah, there's ways to mitigate this. And um, would, would, you, would you say that... Um the reason why we've had incompetent leaders for for so long in the United States is because of them voting. Yeah, yeah. Women vote always. Democrat. for <laughs> for for self. Yeah, for for self interest security. Yeah, self interest security, <laughs> and they don't Thank care. God someone said it, man. It's it's it's, it's, it's You'll insane. You'll be crazy when I say this shit. No, women women How are dare you? Democrats and Democrat All progressives. This shit. Are scumbags and they're evil. From my from my perspective, utilitarian Democrats they're they're all utilitarians, by the way. They're all uh, fundamentally hedonistically evil. And women push the Democrat vote like no other. And you know why? Because it's nice and socially acceptable. Yeah. 
I want to be accepted. I want everybody to, to you know, accept that I am, um, you know, part of the socially acceptable group. They don't ever want to be part of the non-socially acceptable group. They want to be part of the whole. Yeah. And so it's very unpopular Right now, if right wing, if right wingers, if that was considered like the popular thing, the the in crowd thing, that was the thing everybody was doing, they'd all vote Republican. <laughs> okay, yeah. but it ain't, and they they move towards uh, the Democrat vote, and the reason is, man, they really offer up a lot of security for women. Yeah. At the expense of men, but working class men, what are they all doing? They're all voting for Republicans. Yeah. Yeah. They're all voting to, hey, stop taking my money. Yeah. Hey, this sucks. Yeah. Hey, the, you know, I, I'd like to drive down the road that's actually paved yeah. instead of pothole filled. You yeah. know, with uh, why don't we put two more lanes? Looks like this we could we could put two more lanes. You know what I mean? It, the, they vote um, with risk. Yeah. They don't mind taking some risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Women, mm, no risk. Yeah, yeah. No, no I mean, and I mean, when you look at it, like uh, they're just. It's interesting how your our biology even determines how we vote yeah. right like it's like oh more secure there's secure oh wait you're gonna give us like loan forgiveness and handouts and stuff yeah you know what i'll vote this way and yeah man they want the security and, and a lot of the times democrats sell them that security even oh, though they man. don't get it they don't really get it right it's it's kind of put they, it on a platter for them. yeah yeah it's how it's, it's how they uh got the the black vote too how the democrats got the black yep. votes by selling security bribery too. You know, so it's like it's a bunch of bullshit, man. Yep. So that's your pocket minions, the black vote. Yeah. Well, what facts. are they doing right now? Think about this. Like, I'll give you a really good. We'll read chats here in a bit, guys. Yep. Get them in now while you can, and we'll read them here. I'll in give a you one of the most fantastic um, kind of arguments on this. If you, if they, if they ever say, "Now we know health security," just look at abortion. Yeah, just, just look point. at abortion. Good point. Women want the right to abort for security. Agreed. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Mm. That's the only reason they want it, right? I don't want to be laid down with this little this little thing that's going to take 18 years of my life that I have to support and mother and blah, 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 blah. What are Democrats pushing? We want the, a woman's right to choose. Women need to be able to choose. Women need to be able to abort. W- women need to be able... But that's a security push, and mm. that's all it is. And that is how it's being pushed. Powerful. If they take away your right to choose, what happens to your security? Why you you wouldn't just be able to have promiscuous sex with no consequences anymore, right? That's yeah. that, that's not security. Yeah, but that's a great example right this second that you can point to and say, look, other than for security, right? Why would this be being pushed? Yeah, because that's the way women see it. You know, it's interesting because when I look at women that vote on the right, nine out of ten times it's either a they're married, they're married, or b mm-hmm. they are aligning with what their father or their brother sure. taught them. Nine out of ten times when, when they do that. But when they're like super blue, it's like, okay, single mom or didn't have a father in the household. There's like no strong masculine presence a lot of the College. Times. Well, and you know, a lot of times, and let's never take this out of the equation, they simply don't think about it at all. That too. <laughs> they yeah, simply no, have facts. never thought. The cool thing to do is vote yeah, for Biden. Yeah, right? they simply <laughs> never cool. even bothered thinking about it. And when you put them to the question and you watch their entire ideology crumble from a single question, you go, how did you never think about that ever in your life? You went and destroyed my vote. <laughs> you wrecked my vote. You wrecked my brother's vote, my father's vote. You know what I mean? You that, That's what you You guys never even thought about this. They don't care. Not for one second. Yeah. So I agree with you that there's got to be skin in the game. I think, um, you know, for women that obviously are in the military, civil service, and government, etc., they they have some skin in the game. Absolutely. Your vote should be the same. But let's be honest, man. The majority of these chicks, like, I don't think an OnlyFans chick's vote should be equal to a man's vote. Fuck no. Listen, or a sex worker. Any of these chicks. Because you know they don't have skin in the game. They don't have to go to, to the draft. You know how you win them over? What? T- TikTok. Listen, if you don't vote for our side, it's going to be banned. They vote for it. 100%. <laughs> they want it. So they want it. Well, women you. are highly susceptible to propaganda. Yeah. If we can put ourselves in positions to be dealing in that propaganda, we can be dealing in the positions to influence women. And I can give you an example. Target them advertisers target That's yeah. right. Yeah, 100%. That was what I was going to say. Target yeah. them. If you can advertise towards women mm-hmm. the alternative message, they'll go for it. Look at Gillette. Like, I, I That's mean, how they got them all smoking. I always, I, always <laughs> use, I always use this example, right? So it's like yep. the example I always use a lot of times just to show like how much they control the marketplace Gillette did an ad, right, back in like 2018, 2019. This is years ago now, right? They're feeling the consequences of it now. But where they said toxic masculinity, right? And they just shit on men for like a couple minutes, right? Like men are shitty, blah, 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 whatever. And they did that, right, to target females. But think to yourself, wait, hold on. Men's razors, this is a company for men. 
why the fuck are they going to the opposite gender? That's like the equivalent to like Victoria's Secret said, like, stop being toxic bitches. And mm-hmm. they just had a bunch of, Men. you know, OF chicks. No, like OF chicks being 304s and finessing dudes and divorcing them and taking their money. Mm-hmm. Like, could you imagine outrage if like Victoria's Secret did like that, did that and like made like a men's empowerment type commercial and said, you stupid whores need to do but better. There wouldn't be one. They, like, like yeah, they'd be done. Yeah, they'd be done. shit on. But Gillette. Does that? They have the gall to do that, and just they go after their they shit on their target audience. But then in my head, it hit me. Oh, why? Because when you're an advertiser, you need to market to women, even at the expense of your target audience. Yeah. If that doesn't prove that the propaganda machine is always going to push the females, I don't know what else proves. You're going to ostracize the like people buying Budweiser. your shit. Look like at what happened with Budweiser. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They, it's, it's the same type of thing. <laughs> Men were not into that message at all. Yeah. Right. That was a very social justice style message with Mulvaney. You yeah. know what I mean? That was a big L. And it was a huge yeah. L, right? Huge L. But who was coming out supporting it and calling you a bigot and evil? Yeah. A bunch of women. Yeah. I can't believe you. Myron, how yeah. could you? Yeah. How, you're, you're terrible about You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> how what did you, you do? Yeah. It's, it's wild. And, and it's like the fact that advertisers are willing to take the risk yeah. and alienate their the people that buy their shit at the, to, to go ahead and appease females. I do. I it proves that we live in a gynocentric society, and and the advertisers know this, and that's what you look at the Super Bowl commercials. Literally, we were just in in Vegas. You look at the Super Bowl commercials; they were all targeted towards females. I mean, Patrick mentioned with companies ESG scores, so I get I get it, it, it is a losing battle for money, but at the same time, to keep relevant and stay in these circles, you got to play the game on the level. Yeah, it's just like it's just yeah. crazy to me. I mean, like what, like in my head, like what, what, who was at the Bud Light meeting? Like, you know what, man, that's a good idea. Let's go ahead mm-hmm. and shit on the guys that drink this shit, right? <laughs> Which are, let's be honest, it's gonna be guys like you, Andrew. Well, it was right? a female. Like, like, it was a, well, that's that's what I used to like, like it. Yeah. I used to like Bud Light, right? Yeah, you know, like guys that drink Bud Light typically mm-hmm. are American guys between eighteen all the way up into the fifties that mm-hmm. are like America, like all that stuff, like. And you're gonna go ahead and just say, ah, "Let me put this fucking dude in here." Like, yeah, but know. who came up with it? A woman. It was a woman. It was. It was a woman. It was. She came up with the entire marketing strategy, and you know there was, and there's no escaping that that's true. That it's all gynocentric based. Yeah. Right. But I think Gillette's commercial was run by a female. Yeah. Too. But mm. look, I mean, one thing that was kind of nice was the Christian base. The Christian base of the nation. They boycotted, Bud Budweiser. They boycotted them. All of them. And it yeah. worked. Yeah. And they were like, wait a second, we have some power here that we forgot we had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was nice to see. Yeah. And it's like, you know, uh, that kind of pushback, I'd like to see more of it. Yeah. You know, and there's been a bunch of, I, I just wish like, because the problem is, I know, like, I mean, I said this earlier, but it's like the the libs, man, they're just so much louder than the conservative people. Like, you know, but the, the conservatives, they, like, it's a silent majority, though. Like, if you're on X, right, and you look at like someone post some stupid woke bullshit, like the comments are like you're a fucking idiot, stupid, blah blah blah, etc. But it's like, where are these people in real life? Like in real life, they're not the ones demonstrating and doing, uh, you know. And uh, well, they're doing peaceful protests. But what gets on the news? The fucking liberals going crazy in Minneapolis, right? Like it, it's just that like they just have more cam time. They control the the media, right? They're in the media more. It's just yeah, they're, they have another they've, advantage they've infiltrated. Yeah, that is ahead. often not thought about. Mentally ill people are entertaining. <laughs> Mentally ill people, they're super fun to watch. And progressives all over the internet who are highly mentally ill, right? They're fun to watch and laugh at and, you know, make fun of and, and this kind of thing. Conservatives come on. We haven't had a good conservative voice like Rush Limbaugh, right, come around, like, you know, that, that kind of once in a generation voice who's super entertaining and informative in, you know, the whole the whole package deal. Yeah. It's harder because they have to they have to go work, right? Being highly entertaining, as you know, it's a skill all in, uh, you know, in itself. Yeah. And most on our side, a lot of them don't have it because they're not emotionally unstable lunatics. What's going to get more views? That's a right. A feminist in red hair screaming like, ah! yep. or a guy eloquently explaining the difference between men and women yep. biologically. Well, people are going to go ahead and look at the feminist go, ah! you know, that's just, you're right. I share them myself. Yeah. I share my. I'm not immune. I'm like, man, look at this crazy bitch. <laughs> yeah. Look at this shit this chick yeah, is yeah, doing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And my buddy will send it back and go, what the? Fuck? Yeah. You know? And then and it goes viral. Yeah. 
But it is entertaining, and mentally ill people are entertaining, and the left is filled to the brim with them. I mean, it's just overloaded. They brag about that. Oh yeah, illness. they love it. I've seen my I've seen my psychiatrist and psychologist eight times this week. You know what I mean? They love it. Remember They're all when it used some, to be that's crazy. Remember when like uh, maybe I'm showing my age with this one. Like, but remember like it used to be like negative to go see a shrink. Yeah. Do they even call them shrinks anymore? Like, like it used to be like, wait, you went to go see a psychiatrist? You went to go see a therapist? What the yeah. fuck? is wrong with you pussy like, like well, now they're to... all bragging about their degrees i have a degree in sociology they all by the way have a degree in sociology yeah. everyone i've never i haven't met one yet that doesn't yeah. have a degree in sociology yeah. Bec- and they they love it they think it's great because they think it's a form of manipulation they think that they're going to school to learn how to manipulate people and their emotions and their machinations better that's why they do it that's why they're that's appealing to women to move towards sociological fields. That's why you see them move towards it because they, it's a subtle form of manipulation. Mr. Jordan Peterson's I mean, uh, psycho, psych, uh, yo, psych, um, um You got pastors his sending title. people that are married to like a psychiatrist. That's crazy. Pastors. That is crazy. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, but you know, some of those pastors are also letting two men get married in their church. That which, is true. That, to that me, is wild, too. That, yeah. to me, is like, what? What is that this? Is it's sad, bro. What is this? That is wild. No, I mean... <laughs> It's it, it's really an interesting time to be alive, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's like, we're old enough to remember... I shouldn't exist right now. I should be in a factory. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, the, the the fact that there's so many more coming, Yeah. right? They're just, they're just tired of it, dude. It, it, it used to be, like, shameful to say, I'm going to go see my psychiatrist, or I'm going to go see a therapist or something. Like, it used to be like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Like, man up, bitch. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. But now it's like, a flex, like, yeah, I'm on it. Uh, 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 what, what's that fucking drug that people used to relax? Say, I'm on Xanax. Yeah. Like, well, my dad. Bro, we used to make world, fun bro. of people. If, dude, if you had to, you like, I remember we used to make fun of kids. Wait, you take uh, Ritalin? Fuck wrong with you. Like, we used to laugh at people for that shit. Oh, you need Adderall to focus? You're an idiot. Like, we used to roast people for that shit. Now it's like, oh, just pop it like candy. Fanix. Like, there's a whole, and it's interesting because it's like, it's infiltrated the music. If you look at, like, hip hop, right, in the 90s, right? Verbal, lyrical, things made sense. They're telling you a fucking story. You're listening to, like, I don't even listen to Slick Rick, but I can acknowledge the fact that he was like a good rapper, right? He was like telling you a fucking story and shit. Like, cool Modi, all these guys, right? Mm-hmm. Up until Jay-Z, et cetera. Then we get into the late 2000s, 2010s, et cetera. Then you start getting people mumble rapping, not making I'm sense. I'm on lean. I'm on drugs, et cetera. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, what the fuck is going on here? And it, as the drug use like became more apparent in like the music... Right, and people are just open about it. Now you got guys like flexing, like, yeah, I'm on some Xanax right now. Like the regular guys flexing that shit. I'm like, what the fuck? I remember growing up as a kid, like, if you even said that you smoke weed, like we'd kind of be like, huh, what look at you, you fiend, you're a loser. But I don't know, man. It's like cool to be a druggie nowadays. It's, it's crazy. It's complete me. opposite. It's-